Another awkward conversation. Have you prayed about the Book of Mormon? So inevitably, if you're talking to Mormon missionaries, that's what their push is. You know, they want you to get baptized, but they more, you know, the first, you know, push is they'll give you a Book of Mormon with some highlighted verses, one of which is going to be Moroni 10, 3 through 5. And they'll read it for you. And, you know, here's the promise is that if you, uh, you read these words and you pray about them, that, that God is going to reveal the Holy Spirit will manifest the truth to you. Um, and then they define that as the burning of the bosom experience, you know, where that feeling that you have, you know, in your gut is God testifying to you that the Book of Mormon is true, that Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God. I mean, it's like a catch all thing. I mean, you read this one, one verse and then you pray about it and then it's like, it means every single thing about Mormonism is true. And, um, so, you know, they inevitably will... You know, they'll give you some other verses and maybe like his first vision experience and, you know, the whole, that whole scenario, you know, uh, is things to read and, and they want you to pray about that. And then they'll come back to you. Well, well, did you? And as the Christian, you're like, I don't want to pray about this thing because I, I already know the truth. I already know the truth and I'm a little suspicious about where this book came from, you know, on some level, some way, shape, or form, but you don't want to, again, you say any of that stuff to them, and it's immediate wall, because yeah. there's just certain things that you should probably stay away from saying, because, like, they hold them as very sacred, and it's like, you, you start attacking Joseph Smith, or you start attacking the Book of Mormon, or whatever, and it's automatically like, wall, Ooh, you're of Satan, uh -huh. I'm not listening to you anymore. And so this is a, a tricky one. Uh, first of all, you know, I just want to point out that test in Moroni 10. It says, pray if these things are not true. So, I mean, that's one out you can just take. Well, I prayed if they weren't true. God said they weren't. And so, you know. <laughs> I've never uh, heard that. I know I've read through that. I know I've passed over that, but I just didn't catch that. Yeah. Pray if it's not true. So you can actually <laughs> quote that back to him and say, so, well, I did pray about that <laughs> right and you know just a little a short caveat with my story when i was in high school you know a girl i liked gave me a book of mormon with this really nice note um in the front of it talking about how valiant i must have been in the pre-existence you know because she admires different things about me or whatever and she wanted me to read the book and so i was actually i started reading the book of mormon i got to that thing i did pray and god i i i'm not kidding about this God said, you haven't read the Bible yet. Why do you have this thing? That's what I honestly heard God say back to me. And so I did. I put it down, and then I picked up the Bible. And then as I started getting really into the Bible, then God got a hold of my heart for Mormon people. And then I found myself, you know, picking the Book of Mormon back up at that point. But I was a lot more grounded in my faith at that point. And, and I had that proper balance of, like, really making sure I was in the Word before, you know, more so than I'm ever in any of these other, you know, texts. But th that just aside, um, the way that the tactic, the, way, the best way I found is just, again, put it back on them and just use it as a way of saying, oh, well, talk to me about that. Have you experienced that? And so then they, they share their testimony, which for a Christian is going to sound a little bit weird because, you know, we launch into this whole story of who we were before Christ and how we came to Christ and how he's changed our life since. And for the Mormon, a testimony is, well, I know that the Book of Mormon is true and I know that Joseph Smith is a true prophet. They list all of these, I know, I know, I know, I know. And uh, so if you've ever heard them just say that without saying this is what I'm doing, they're bearing their testimony to you. And they, they often do this uh, as it's a thought killing technique. If you know, I don't want to go on the mind control rabbit trail, but um, it's a thought killing technique they're taught to when you got them on their heels. And that's a good way to know you got them on their heels. You got them to think about something and they didn't like what they, they thought about. And so they're doing what they're taught and they show their testimony to you. And so the emotions override the facts and that, that's what they're taught to do. But 
all you're doing is you're getting them to share. Yeah, okay, well, when did you first, how did you know to come to know that? And then they talk about how they prayed and they had the testimony and all that kind of stuff. And I say, well, so does that mean for you that like everything in the Book of Mormon is true? And so, of course, they're going to say, well, yeah. And so that is a launching point because most Christians don't realize this, but the Book of Mormon reflects more of 19th century American Christianity than it does current Mormon doctrine. Let me just say this to all the listeners, and especially those who are new to this. In no way is Jason or I saying that, that the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, the Book of Abraham, the Doctrines and Covenants are, are scriptural. It, it's not scriptural. It, it, is, it is something that is a made-up work. Absolutely fiction. Okay, But what Jason's saying is that <clears throat> the doctrine that you do find in the Book of Mormon, oddly for the most part, actually matches that of the Bible, the doctrine. Obviously, all of everything else is fiction. Um, but I guess what Jason is, is getting into is using that, using their own writings as a springboard to get to these, these uh, um, doctrinally sound doctrines that are actually found in their book, oddly enough. Um, now, would you, if, if somebody is not familiar with, really familiar and knows where they're going with this type of an argument. I get, look, I guess I'm not even going to form it as a question. I would suggest don't do this unless you really, you understand their writings yeah. and you understand how to tactfully pull this off. Cause it can actually get you in some pretty dangerous waters pretty quick. Um, but yes. uh, anyway, yes, back to you. this is probably the tactic I would probably recommend the least. Okay. Because it is a little bit more advanced, but I, I want to say some things that you kind of just hit on. One is there is a difference between the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants and Pearl of Great Press, which is the, their other two books of scripture. Uh, right. Book of Mormon was supposedly what the angel Moroni revealed to Joseph Smith buried in upstate New York near his home on golden plates that he dug up and he translated by the, the power of the you know Holy Ghost or whatever, Urim and Thum and all this stuff. Um, that is reflecting the very early stages. Now, another thing that most Christians may not be aware of historically is that there was this thing called the Restoration Movement within Christianity. And you have guys like Thomas and Alexander Campbell. And so the, the Christian churches, Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ, Nazareth, you know, some of those are what they call Restorationist movements. And they believed, this is different from like Martin Luther and the Reformation, like, okay, there's some things that have gone off course, let's just get back to the scripture, let's get back to the Bible, let's reform some things from the inside. This is uh, restorationist, which means we kind of do believe that Christianity has gone completely off the rails and needs to be restored. We need to get back to New Testament Christianity. And so a lot of these groups, Christian Science, Jehovah's Witnesses, LDS, they all believe that they all would all call themselves Restorationist Christianity. So Joseph Smith took uh, that, that movement and he just put legs to it in a different direction. Okay. And so that's why the Book of Mormon at that early stage reflects a lot of the questions that were being asked in Christian circles at that time and gives them very definitive answers. And um, I actually read a response by, it was, I think, Alexander Campbell, and he was responding to the Book of Mormon, and he says, you know, Joseph Smith gets to have such clear answers to all of the burning questions of our day. It's too bad that he didn't know anything about ancient Jewish culture that he was supposedly writing about. Because and so you have all these anachronisms, and you know, just not just doctrinally, but like plagiarizing from the King James version. You know, all these things. Um, but a lot of things like. Um, 
specific conversations in the Book of Mormon where, you know, uh, are there more than one God? No. Right? And just so many verses that talk about the one true God. And even, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which are one God. Which Mormons don't believe in the Trinity. They believe the three separate gods. But a lot yeah, a of that lot stuff, a lot of that stuff comes in really almost right before Joseph dies. Um, he started to gain a following, and it, I think it kind of started going to his head a little bit at that point. Um, he kind of wanted to marry multiple women, things like that. Um, and so he, his doctrines became a lot more elaborate. Um, the whole God had a God and that infinite regression of gods and we can become gods that came in like that kind of stuff came in at the very end um right before he he died pretty much and so that's that's reflected in the revelations that are in the doctrine of covenants especially like pearl of great price so it's really it's a lot harder to go into those books and pull out christian doctrine but in, th in things like one God, salvation by grace, you know, all those kind of things, there are verses within the Book of Mormon where you can go there. And I'll, I'll just throw out one. Um, every August 18th, um, there's a movement called, uh, you know, uh, 818 Day. Remember Mor Moroni 818. And Moroni 818 it says that God has been God from all eternity. And, you know, so there's a, Christians who have latched on using this tactic, sort of, sort of, and, you know, trying to reach out to their Mormon friends, like, do you believe in Moroni 818? Because we do. <laughs> and um, that kind of thing. Um, and so that's just, I, I would say in the testimony question, have you prayed about the Book of Mormon or have you read the, you know, this book or that, you know, revelation kind of thing that these groups throw out? It's a good way just to kind of deflect it a bit so you can kind of dodge the question without, you know, offending them, you know, and, you know, spoiling the conversation and, you know, just getting them again to engage in dialogue. And so as quickly as you can, you want to probably deviate off into, you know, one of the other tactics um, yeah, and, and really, um, the scriptures, mm -hmm. the, the real Bible, holds the ultimate authority. And, yes. and ultimately, yes. we want to steer them back to that Bible, because yes. that's where we want them. That's, that's actually inspired of God.